I've always felt that nobody knows him like I do. I can read his body language, I can look at his eyes and I know exactly what he's trying to say and he has no speech. So what's coming out of his mouth is gobbledygook really. They are trying to communicate, although they might not be doing it verbally, there's so many other ways. You just need to sort of really take the time and have patience just to understand them. I could tell by my mum's eyes, I was her son, she was my mum. But she would, she would move her lips together to tell me if she was thirsty. People need to understand that this was an intelligent, lovely person and to treat them as such. Biggest challenge is that knowing the patient, come to their level. When you're looking after them, you have to be uh, very patient with them. That's the big thing you have to have with dementia. Very, very patient with them. Listen to them, what they what they're saying. Sometimes they repeat and repeat. If I gave him a choice, just one thing or the other, it sent him into a frenzy. Because he, he couldn't make a decision. So I'd say, like, a cup of coffee, Keith. Yep, he'd have a cup of coffee. A cup of tea, he'd have a cup of tea. But, or do you want egg and chips, or do you want lasagna? Absolute, real confusion. I think they need kindness, um, and not to shout at them and not to, I don't know, keep repeating that they want them to do something. I think it's perhaps more a physical thing where you can perhaps help them um, physically, show them the way to go, not say it's over there. Wow. I think if the carers could be in the hospital, that would help enormously because a person with dementia needs stability. They need the same people around them all the time. They need familiar objects. You put them in, a, in an alien environment and they're terribly frightened. And with the fright comes bad behaviour. It's bad behaviour.